I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I've got a tag video for you. This tag is the Zodiac Perfume Tag. So this tag just basically tries to relate your zodiac sign and the time of year in which you were born and also like looks at your birth flower and your birth gemstone and just tries to get you to tie in perfumes to fit with those characteristics or those colours or those scents. So my sun sign, I, my conscious self, is Pisces. Pisces is a symbol that's represented by fish and it's the 12th zodiac sign. Pisces is meant to be ruled by Neptune and Uranus and it's a water sign. And Pisces people are meant to be friendly, selfless, empathetic, tolerant and non-judgmental. They're also meant to be creative, faithful and caring, but they are also prone to sadness and they can often be the martyr or the victim in situations because of their empathy. They're also known as dreamers. So the fragrance that I'm going to pick to represent Pisces and fish is going to be a kind of an aquatic feeling fragrance. So the obvious fishy fragrance is the one with the caviar note in it, and I'm sure you all know what this one is. It's Mugler's Womanity. So Womanity is mainly a fig perfume, but it's also kind of metallic feeling to me. It's very beach-like, it sort of feels like you've been in the sun all day and you've got that salty feel on your skin. I, I'm quite a big fan of Womanity, um, but I know that a lot of other people don't like it. So that's probably the one that I would really pick for Pisces and for the fish symbol. So the next category is your birthday month, and my birthday month is February. I was born right at the end of February, actually in a leap year, but not quite on leap day, but very, very close to it. So February always makes me think of Valentine's. It also just makes me think of extreme cold, really, um, and being wanting to be comforted and wanting to stay inside and be cosy and warm. And so the fragrance that makes me think of, you know, snuggling up on sofas and cashmere jumpers and, you know, all those kind of luxurious things that you want to do when it's super cold outside is this one. So this is Narciso Poudre. So this fragrance is relatively new in my collection and it's just a really powdery musky fragrance but it's got jasmine and rose in it and it's just a really beautiful classy smelling sophisticated fragrance. Perfect as I said for snuggling up so that's my choice for February. So the next part of this tag is actually your zodiac season so I think technically February and Pisces fall into the winter season of the zodiac signs. So I'm going to choose a fragrance that reminds me of winter. It's something that is really sweet and really something that I wouldn't want to wear in the rest of the year. And I think that it's one of the things that makes the winter better because you can wear super sweet fragrances. The fragrance that I only really wear in winter is this one. So this is Diesel's Lover Dose. I really like this because of the licorice in it and the anise and it's just really beautiful vanilla fragrance. I know it's got sort of fallen out of popularity now but I really do love this one. It's one of those guilty pleasure kind of fragrances for me so that's my choice for winter. Diesel's love a dose. So the next category is my birth flower and I had no clue what the birth flower was for February I'll be honest so I had to look it up. So the ones that I came up with for Pisces and for February were one, water lily. Well, I don't have any water lily fragrances in my collection. I did used to have one, it was Vera Wang's Princess, but the less said about that one, the better. I've decluttered that one. And then the other options that I found were violets and primrose. And I think I only have one violet fragrance in my collection. And to be honest, it's a good one. So this is Guerlain's Insolence. And I think, yeah, this smells very different on your skin as opposed to how it sort of smells in the air. If you smell it close to the skin, it smells more of iris and smells more powdery. But if you smell it in the air, it smells more of violets and more of the berries, I think. So, yeah, I've really been pleasantly surprised by this fragrance. I thought it might smell a bit too mature for me. And I've kind of been wary of trying it from other people's reviews. But I'm really glad that I bought it and tried it. So that's Guerlain's Insolence. If you've not already tried it, go check it out. So the next category is the gemstone. So I'm not sure which of these gemstones I should be choosing. I'm not sure whether it's meant to be the zodiac gemstone or whether it's meant to be the month gemstone. 
So if I was choosing for February, the gemstone would be amethyst and there's really only one fragrance that you could ever choose for amethyst because the bottle looks entirely like an amethyst and that is alien because yeah, it just does look like an amethyst, doesn't it? So classic jasmine fragrance. I think probably most to nearly everybody would know how this smells. Very luminous fragrance, really bright and shining, perfect for a winter's day to brighten up February. And then Alien Mirage is the fragrance that I would choose for the Pisces gemstone or the March gemstone, so that's aquamarine. So it, the bottle just again looks very much like an aquamarine. You know, aquamarines are very clear, maybe a little bit more blue than this, a little bit more aquamarine than this. Um, but yeah, this fragrance also has those mineral notes that would reflect that aquamarine sea kind of feeling that you would expect with a Pisces associated stone maybe. Not sure. Anyway, so that's my choice for Aquamarine Alien Mirage. So the final category is your personality type. And I think by this they mean your zodiac personality type. So Pisces are known to be mutable signs. So that means they're likely or liable to change. Um, it comes from the Latin word um, mutare to change. So Pisces are known as the most emotional of all the signs. They take on other people's feelings because they have such great empathy and they take on people's problems. And that means that they can lose themselves in the process of trying to help other people. They're known as great diplomats, but because of their changeability, they can also be known to be inconsistent, unreliable and uncommitted. So I think the fragrance that is going to represent that kind of personality to me are ones that have different kind of facets to them. So I think there are two that really stand out here. So I think the first one is probably Nina Ricci Chant d'Extase. So this fragrance has like sea vibes, but it also has fruity vibes and it also has sweetness with a caramel feeling to it as well. So it's just kind of doesn't really know what it wants to be. And it's a very changeable feeling fragrance to me. So that's Nina Ricci Chant d'Extase. And then the second fragrance is Want by D Squared. So this fragrance is a vanilla based fragrance, but it's also got a lot of heliotrope in it. So the heliotrope can come off almondy or like a cherry kind of scent to me. And this fragrance just seems to smell a little bit different on different people and in different situations and different weather types. It's just a very interesting fragrance that isn't one dimensional. It's not just a vanilla fragrance. And when people talk about this, sometimes it sounds very much like it's just going to be a vanilla, but it's really not. It's more of a floral vanilla. So I think this fragrance really does tap into that mutable characteristic. So that's the final official category, but I just thought it'd be interesting to look at the other facets of my zodiac signs. So we always concentrate on the sun sign, don't we? But the moon sign, so your subconscious side is also important. So my moon sign is Aquarius and that sign is meant to reflect your subconscious. So it's meant to be very calm and assessing in times of crisis. And people who are Aquarians are also meant to be good at objective evaluations. So Aquarians are meant to like highly original things and things that stand out. So the fragrance I'm going to choose for Aquarians is Versace Crystal Noir. And I have the EDT version. Um, there's a great debate, isn't there, between the EDT and the EDP. I think the EDP has now been discontinued. And the notes that are listed on Fragrantica are not the notes that are actually the EDT version. So don't be swayed by those. I don't think there's any actually meant to be any coconut whatsoever in the EDT version now. And I think that actually the fig in this does mimic coconut. So if you are looking for coconut, you might find it if you sometimes perceive fig as coconut. So this fragrance is just kind of cool smelling and it's also kind of a little bit on the edge of a white floral, but not really a piercing white floral at all. Um, if you just want a sort of tropical, cool smelling fragrance, then try Versace Crystal Noir. It's very very different to every other fragrance that I've tried. And then finally, my rising sign. So this is the way other people perceive you. And it's not necessarily how you are in reality, but it's your outward face. And my rising sign is Leo. So Leos are meant to be action oriented people with very sociable personalities and to be confident and blunt. And I have been told sometimes by people when they first meet me that they find me blunt and they find me to be um, to be overly confident and to be scary almost. I, I've had that at work a few times when people have said that they, when they first met me, 
they were scared to ask me things because they felt like I was someone who who wouldn't wouldn't respond to to questions about things in a in a positive way, which I, I find kind of confusing really because I always like to help people. So Leos are also meant to be vibrant, fun people, and they're also supposed to be kind of representing uh, an inner child. They're meant to be you know very attentive people, very inquisitive but also demanding and dramatic. But the fragrance I'm going to choose for my inner Leo is Orchid Soleil by Tom Ford. So this fragrance is really, really loud in the opening. And that is what the Leo rising sign is meant to be showing of for you, isn't it? It's meant to be showing that you're, you're outwardly very loud, but that's not how you are in reality. And this fragrance, when it dries down, is a really creamy, chestnutty kind of vanilla. And I think those two changing personalities is really representing how I am perceived, how, how Leo's, how Leo ascendants are perceived by other people. So fearsome outside, but ultimately just a big softy inside. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you've not done already. Please, if you want to do this video, please do it. I'm not going to tag anyone because I think it's quite an old tag now. But I have loved doing this tag and I find all this really fascinating. Despite being a scientist, I am completely sucked in by astrology. I think you can always rec recognise some facet of your personality in what is said about these star signs. And yeah, I just really, really like to read about them. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.